Hi, and welcome to Empowered Marketing by Professor Hines. This podcast is devoted to beginning marketers and owners of small businesses. We're here to help you learn social media marketing. Each episode presents important elements in social media marketing that you can use in your campaigns to generate better results, especially more business. Empowered Marketing is exclusively sponsored by a Marketing Services in Orange County, California. a Marketing Services serves small and mid-sized businesses in the areas of strategic marketing consultation, social media marketing using all forms of social media, campaign creation and management in both paid and owned media, pay-per-click campaigns, search engine optimization, graphic design, and videography. A Cube Marketing is owned and managed by me, Professor Joe Hines. My experience includes over 20 years of Fortune 100 corporation marketing management, as well as 10 years of academic work as professor at California State University Fullerton, Concordia University, Biola University, Cal Baptist University, and Fullerton College. You can find out more about A Cube Marketing Services. Use the link on the home page of this podcast or call A Cube Marketing at 714-872-0561. Hi everybody, this is Professor Joe Hines. Today in episode three, we're completing our introductory dive into the fundamentals of social media marketing. We're continuing our discussion of the social media environment, key players, and important fundamentals that are important to understanding the rest of our podcast episodes. I hope that you're enjoying this podcast as much as I'm enjoying creating it for you. Just like in my classroom, if you've got questions or you'd like to contribute your thoughts on things we're talking about, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me through uh, my contact page on my website at acubedmarketing.com. You'll also find a link to the site on the homepage of this podcast. So drop me a line or even pick up the phone and I'll do my best to get back to you within 24 hours. Let's get rolling with episode three. So let's take a look at the kind of behavior that people are exhibiting in social media. I mean, one, we've already talked in a few different ways about how people share information. Well, we'll look at later in the semester how we can talk about the social media and, and that world uh, as being composed of four unique zones. There is a community zone. There is what we call a publishing zone. There's an entertainment zone. And ultimately, there's also um, a shopping or a commerce zone. So in the sharing area, we are visiting each other's pages. We're texting once in a while, or we are dropping a post or responding to a post, or maybe we're seeing a post that somebody wrote themselves and we say, hey, that, I like that. I'm going to share it on my page. So we share that content in different ways. We're reaching out and we're establishing community one you know uh, one level of sophistication up from there would be okay we're in the publishing zone now so if you're writing blogs or if you're creating videos or maybe you have a podcast uh, if you're doing uh, creating webinars for your business if you're doing any of these things you're now in the creation category uh, we, we talk uh, on social media, uh, which could include the sharing that I've uh, mentioned earlier. Um, but we can also do things like Google Hangouts, where now we're actually sharing video and we're communicating in actual speech with each other. Or there are things like WhatsApp, another social media uh, um, uh, example, where we can actually record a message into WhatsApp and then send that to somebody rather than sending them a text message. And better yet, and I don't really know how phone companies make money anymore in this world, but you know, with WhatsApp, you, you can actually hold, you know, hold internet, you know, uh, transatlantic, transcontinental uh, phone conversations for free on their system. Of course, we all work. So as you guys get into your careers, you'll be able to 
you know, go online and do document sharing. How many of you guys currently do anything with Google Docs or, or have information saved in Google Drive? Well, you know, we've got virtual work teams where people may never actually ever set foot in the same workspace again, but we can all in real time work together and hold meetings and work together on the same documents and be very, very productive. Uh, and if we're not doing that, certainly we're capable of using the, you know, uh, video conferencing take, cap you know, take uh, video conferencing capabilities to uh, facilitate that sort of a thing. When we move into a buy and sell, you know, that's like, you know, the fifth kind of communication that we can talk about here. When we move into buy and sell, what we're really able to do is take advantage of all of the um, options available to us in the social commerce zone. And we'll get very deep into that later in the semester. But this could be things like Yelp, which is part of a company's sales strategy. When you look at the importance and the important role that advocacy and being an advocate of a company or a brand has in the company's you know, ability to persuade new customers. Um, we can do the same thing with Shopify or Groupon. Those are social media types of apps that are out there that also facilitate commerce. And finally, the last area of, of uh, uh, you know, interaction would be learning. So if you simply go to YouTube, not as a publisher, but more as somebody looking to pick up information about just about anything. And you'll see through the course of this semester that I'll be borrowing information from YouTube on a pretty frequent basis. I mean, there's just so much valuable content out there that it's a great device and a great platform to help people learn, you name the subject. Anything from how to repair your car engine or something that might be wrong with your car, all the way to how to cook a great kitchen, uh, chicken cacciatore, for instance, or even how to learn social media marketing. I've already mentioned a couple of times, you know, the term web 2.0. Originally, and this was probably before most of you guys' time, originally the uh, experience, the user experience uh, on the internet was very static, very dry, very boring. It was simply basically content that people had put up there that you could review and you know learn from. So it was like almost like a very static yellow pages or something. The content was was very minimal, and there was certainly you know no ability to view streaming video. Really, no inter uh, there's no inner opportunity or opportunity to interact with the stuff that was out there. Uh, you certainly no um, ability to request samples or anything like that. So very, very limited user participation. All of a sudden with Web 2.0, we've in a huge way opened the door for user participation uh, and creating user generated content as the kind of things that I've mentioned earlier, you know, blogging and videos and consumer micro posts. Crowdsourcing is another big area of interest in the internet these days. And in crowdsourcing, what we're really talking about is the collective wisdom that's posted by huge populations of people when it comes down to how do you solve certain problems or how do you complete tasks? So for instance, in the example about YouTube that I gave a couple of minutes ago, Think about how with you know, any issue that you might have had in the past, in order to address that issue, you might have gone to Google and Googled. I mean, think about that. We even use the term Google as a verb these days. Um, but we've Googled it and we've used the information that we've learned to help us address certain situations and complete work that we have to do. Uh, we can talk about network effects because of Web 2.0. You know, this is where um, members in social media become creators as well as sharers, uh, or we become co-creators as well as being consumers of other people's information. So every additional user that gets added to this population of people communicating and helping each other on the internet and through social media really adds value to the overall experience. 
And that, you know, we can also talk about another really important um, element of social media marketing, which is the rise of the reputation economy. So reputation becomes the thing that many, many companies, even small businesses, even individual entrepreneurs hang their hat on and rely on in order to encourage new customers to do business with us. So that when you write a blog, for instance, what you're doing for people is you are showing them that you're an expert in a particular area and that you have helpful information that you share because you're a great guy and that when they go to you or they go to your page, they go to your blog or your vlog or your podcast, whatever it is, that they're finding information that is super useful to them. And it's because they've learned about you through their search for information like that, that ultimately they might turn to you and say, you know, I'd really like to hire you for this particular project. Business growing, the economy in size increasing because people are able to build their reputations and obviously market themselves through Web 2.0 and through social media. One other thing that I'd really like to um, help you guys understand this evening in this introductory lecture is uh, the difference between three different terms that are all really closely related. There's paid media and there's owned media and then finally there's also earned media. So in paid media, this is um, advertising time um, or basically quote real estate that brands and companies and organizations or even political candidates for instance buy in order to promote their causes, their products, services, their ideas and their organizations. Because we buy that space or time we call it paid media and through 2.0 you know, we can look at really how effective it is because every single click can be measured. So we know how many people saw it, how many people interacted, how did they engage, you know, did they share this information? Um, we can create display ads that will go up on, you know, Google's advertising network. If people see, um, something on Facebook that drives them to our website, if they didn't do business with us, but we were able to catch their uh, identity because of a thing called the Facebook pixel, which is a bit of code that you can get from Facebook and put on your website, we can turn around and quote, retarget them. And we'll be talking about retargeting later in the semester as well. But here the idea is you had one opportunity to maybe sell something to a customer that went to your e-commerce site. But before completing the transaction, the customer left the site. If you dropped a cookie on their computer because, you know, they visited a, 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 your page and because you, they clicked on a product and that triggered a cookie to be dropped, we can then turn around later and find them on the internet and then starving, start serving up ad messages to them in hopes that they'll come back to your page and buy from you at that later date. We can also use paid influencers. So this is more of a public relations type of a campaign. Um, but social media and sharing of information is totally incumbent on the amount of influence somebody has. So what we're always looking for in marketing is to find people that have a great deal of influence whom we can partner with who will then share their influence with us in order for us to activate other people who have less influence. And so what we do is we want to start at the top of an influence cascade, let's call it, to get the ball rolling. And as they do, and people further down in their networks with less influence receive information from people higher up in that network, they will be possibly activated, convinced, and persuaded. Okay. Well, owned media is the second big category here. And with owned media, it sounds like what it is. It's a website could be that a company owns. I mean, they invested in it. They had somebody build it for them or they built it in house themselves, or they've taken out a brand page on Facebook 
or a page on Instagram, let's say for their brand, or they have a brand channel on YouTube. Uh, and so these are things that they own themselves and all of the content there will be about them, but done in a unique way to like old school advertising. In old school, it was, you know, the brand was, you know, cast away on an island and they were hoping that they could convince people to come and buy from them on their island if they just put this message in the bottle and floated it out to sea, okay? Unless they sent this message out, there would be no information coming back. The old technology was only one way. These days, when we get people to our brand pages or even our websites or our brand channels, for instance, we're able to actually start conducting two-way actual communication with the community. We're trying as marketers to build a sense of community around our brands, okay? And we'll visit much more on that as well. Now, the, the, the last section I wanna speak to is earned media. So with earned media, this is all, you know, um, user-generated content, as I mentioned that term earlier. And what I mean is that <clears throat> the brands are relying on their consumers or customers to take messages that they, the brands, have parked out there in social media and then to share it with people elsewhere in their personal networks or for them to simply advocate about our products or brands or services on their pages. And think about why this is so important. I mean, with owned media, for instance, or paid media, let's say it's an ad, the consumer naturally looks at this thing with a bit of suspicion, right? Like, okay, well, you know, you might be telling me that this is the greatest product in the world, but of course you're telling me that. You're paid to say that. You know, you want me to do something and you have a vested interest, which may not necessarily truly be to my benefit. We all are kind of skeptical, right? However, when you see similar information being shared on the pages of people that you personally know, all of a sudden it has that personal level of endorsement. It's that endorsement that makes us say, hey, this just might be information that I can trust. And if I trust it, then, you know, uh, I might really be benefited by it if I buy it and I'm more likely to buy it now. So the chances are that people's resistance to that ad, ad message is lowered considerably. And because it's been lowered and people have actually trialed the product and bought it and liked it, now they're in a better position to become repeat customers. And of course, Nirvana for the brand marketer is the brand loyal customer who has gotten so far down the line of making frequent purchases of a product and always of the same brand that it becomes habitual behavior. This podcast, Empowered Marketing by Professor Hines, is exclusively sponsored by A-Cubed Marketing Services in Orange County, California. In business since 2013, A-Cubed Marketing offers a complete suite of internet marketing services, including strategic marketing consultation, social media marketing using all forms of social media, campaign creation and management in both paid and owned media, pay-per-click campaigns, search engine optimization, graphic design, and videography. A-Cubed Marketing is owned and managed by Professor Joe Hines. His experience includes over 20 years of Fortune 100 corporate marketing management, as well as 10 years of academic work as professor at California State University Fullerton, Concordia, Biola, Cal Baptist University, and Fullerton College. Find out more about A-Cubed Marketing Services Use the link on the home page of this podcast or call a cubed marketing at 714-872-0561.